We've got several leak repairs on this compressor, several seals. We're going to be changing this bearing housing seal, uh, the bearing plate seal, the discharge o-ring. That one needs an o-ring. The way we get those EXVs open, this has this older series train, but on the P2 menus, you go to uh, line 26. You can do an EXV test on circuit one. We submit that test. And you can watch through the sight glass on these and you can you can see the stem open up and retract in there and so what a little do is which it's retracted right now but when that stem retracts up and it clears the sight glass where you can't see it that valve is opened and then we just unplug them that way uh, and we did mark them see so those are specific as to which is which but we did mark it so that uh, the, the recovery process, it'll pull through the evaporator as well and we can pull through those valves and they're not gonna give us any trouble. All right, so we're gonna look real quick. We need to see how much capacity we can do R22 on this tank. HVAC school, we got 239 uh, water capacity. So we're gonna go to tools, uh, recovery fill, we're checking tar now. About 82 pounds. Two thirty-nine. R22. Calculate. Well, refrigerant fill weight is 203 pounds, which. I've always used these as a 200 pound for a 22 anyway, so we did this just to verify, but we're on point. This is another style of subcooler, uh, you know, just a copper coil and a bucket of water. It works. I mean, it's, it doesn't work as, as well as, you know, like that, that uh, raise plate, but it definitely works. There's a lot of people online and out there you can look at use that style and actually cps i mean it's the same thing cps is doing with the one you can buy at the store it just that one costs i think 100 bucks 200 bucks this one costs by that 30 bucks roll of copper and a couple of fittings it's coming along pretty smooth so we've got the discharge line ratcheted up we got it braced up back there that way you know there's just enough play where you can get these things up above the compressor where you can actually work this is your discharge check valve. Uh, anyway, we got this off, so we needed to replace this gasket and this one, and then we're gonna be changing this one. So now that we got this far, our next step is we're gonna pull the suction valve off the end, and we gotta pull the rotor assembly out of, the, or the, the shaft out of the rotor uh, to slide this forward to get to this seal. Yeah, it looks like some maybe brass, something off of this. That's pretty interesting. You can also see where somebody was brazing. Yeah, they got that. Wow. Anyway, and then that, uh, this bolt right here, that's the one we got to pull to slide that out. So there's your stator, there's your rotor, there's your shaft. So that bolt with, the, with that washer, needs to come out so then we can take and slide the shaft out of the rotor because the rotor won't slide forward here's the inside of that service valve so it's got the teflon seal so when it's front seated it seals off flow this is going this side goes into the compressor back seated it's full flow this tap here is always open to line pressure so even with it fully front seated this always has pressure this this one requires a schrader this one is only open whenever it's not back seated. So full back seat, this is closed off. Anywhere else, uh, this has pressure on it. So we got the compressor body split. This is your bearing housing, your rotor housing. So this is your female uh, bolt. That's your male bolt. This male bolt's your drive bolt. This is your slide. So this is what loads and unloads the compressor based off of that puck position. Here's your bearings, yada yada. So anyway, this O-ring is what goes bad. So 
we're replacing that o-ring we'll get a new one in there uh, cleanliness is is very important throughout this process as I say that with a little bit dirty hands so just keep that in mind you can see where the uh, the shaft slipped through the rotor so it's pretty straightforward from here we put a new o-ring in we slide the thing back together uh, uh, it will end up using nylog on it to help seal it. Uh, I've used that before, had really good results. Here's some. Yep. So we'll put some nylog on it and uh, that'll give it a good seal. That'll give it some longevity. You just have to be careful, really, really careful when you're doing this, this piece of it. And you don't want to overstretch that o ring. Anyway, once that's in there, this whole thing just kind of slides back together and it can be kind of funky getting that back in because sometimes you have to take some little shims and kind of hold that o-ring in there as you're sliding the housing back together so it doesn't try to peel out on you it can be like i say it can be kind of tricky well this one's turned a little bit disappointing as you can see we've got everything wrapped up this is the next morning from yesterday so once we got into it we got all this apart we realized that this is a 70 ton compressor and train ended up ordering uh, the parts for a hundred ton compressor for this o-ring and the gasket that goes in the bearing housing so and that is today's friday they've now had to reorder but you know they they were telling us this, that even with them express shipping it it's going to be probably monday at the earliest before any of this comes in so now we got to let this sit over the weekend. So we took some plastic, got everything wrapped, uh, got everything taped up that we had to. It's just really frustrating. And then what makes it worse is we were waiting on the, the, the liquid valve for circuit one. And when we went to pick it up this morning, they sent us the valve for circuit two, not circuit one. So it was half the size it needed to be because well, circuit two is a lot smaller. Anyway, so now they had to reorder for the correct valve on circuit one. Anyway, it just, some little frustrating nuances. We were trying to go ahead and get this job rolling because the customer really needs this circuit online. So, you know, we put a lot of faith in train getting us the right stuff the first time. And, you know, now we've had to take precautions because, well, that didn't happen. I tell you, we've had the worst case scenario here. Well, I say that. It could be a whole lot worse than it is. But we've definitely not got a good one. So we're currently cleaning up on these slides and the impellers. Uh, you know, exactly what I was afraid of happened. We had to wrap all this up. Took train a couple of days with their fastest shipping to get this stuff to us. Uh, you know, then it, it's been raining on us for a solid week. We haven't been able to get in here and do nothing with it, open it up. We finally do get in here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the heavy moisture in the air has already done its damage. Really, really discouraging. Either way, I mean, we'll, we'll come back from it. We will recover from this. It's just really unfortunate. Anyway, we'll get it cleaned up. We're gonna get this button backed up today. And uh, we got working on the uh, liquid valve down there now. And we'll see about getting this back online. Well, we were able to get the compressor cleaned up, get it fully functional. We were exercising the slide valve, exercising the shaft bearings, make sure everything's nice, smooth, easy operation. We got it sealed back up. We got our liquid service valve. Uh, put back together and installed. Come back here and take a peek at it. Bam. They did a great job. Looks really good. We'll get the pressure test going. As long as this holds, you know, hopefully by the end of the day we'll we'll be able to get vacuum on it. Well, our vacuum did extremely well. We got it to pull down to 320. Held beautifully. So we got the uh, charge going back in now. You can see we're just about finished with this tank. We just got started on this one with a second pop. What's crazy is this valve here, the liquid valve, ended up messing up on us. So we weren't able to use it. So we've been having to do the whole tank on vapor. 
retarded. Anyway, that's almost done. We're 60 pounds short on the factory weight from the leaks and stuff we had, which is all part of what we were fixing, obviously. So, won't be too much longer. We'll get the charge in this. We'll do the start up on circuit one, make sure everything's driving, and uh, we'll be able to roll on. This be, be another good one. I just finished the uh, uh, YCIV job earlier today. So you have two real nice videos coming out, the York and the train. So we're doing this recut or this charging with the recovery machine and I noticed that my pump was icing up real bad here at the uh, suction port and there was a whole film. You can see a bunch of the debris of just trash has gotten stacked up in there. So we're gonna clean that out. That's restricting our flow and it's making it not move refrigerant adequately so we can charge it faster. Cause this whole block up here to freeze up. Pretty wild. I've uh, never had one stop up that bad before I realized it. Well, I didn't get the last little bit on camera, but startup it was actually kind of wasn't so hot at first. Uh, so that afternoon, which is yesterday, yesterday afternoon, we finished the charge right at the end of the day. You know, I wanted to go ahead and just see, okay, let's go ahead and get it turned on and just see what it looks like real quick, you know, and, and make sure there's nothing crazy going on. Well, sure enough, compressor B that we did all the repairs on and it had to sit open and things, it wouldn't turn over. Um, we tried it twice and the starter would engage, but it would not spin over. Talk about a heart drop moment. Uh, anyway, we went ahead, left it sit overnight, got the uh, the crankcase heater going, let, let the compressor just sit. Uh, came back in this morning and I uh, wasn't able to film everything. I, I, I really wanted to, but anyway, uh, it came on. Uh, it, it fired right up, it came online, uh, and it, it did exactly what I wanted it to. So my hope was that with the refrigerant getting to sit on it for a little while, uh, any little bit of corrosion or moisture, anything that was in there, you know, that was kind of get binding those bearings up, that refrigerant would deteriorate and, and, and literally eat and remove. And it, and it did exactly that. So it made it to where it could spin over this morning, fired up, loaded, unloaded, ran absolutely perfect. So it is likely given the scenario that the oil filters and the dryer cores will we may have to change here in a couple of months you know which is fine i'm i'm, I'm prepared for that uh, i'm not, not going to worry about that that's not the customer's fault but like i said startup was absolutely perfect now we do have two condenser fan motors on that circuit that we now have found are bad we weren't aware of or made aware of ahead of time so uh, we're gonna go ahead and get those taken care of as well. That's a, that's a no big deal, end of the day. Um, that being said, I appreciate it guys. Uh, MTT, make the time for your family, make the time for your, your spouse, your kids, they really need you. It just, we, we've gotta make the time for them. At the same time, YouTube's gonna recommend a video to you over here. Highly recommend, check it out. They say you're gonna enjoy it. I think you will too. We'll see you later.